Hello and welcome to Home Practice. This groundwork video is about unravelling some of the language you might hear in inclusive contemporary dance practice. Not all of the words, but maybe the first words of home practice. I'm Lucy, I'm white, I have dark curly hair, and I'm a small standing dancer. That might strike you as an unusual introduction, but I don't want to assume that you are experiencing this video visually. And the term standing dancer is a shorthand term that we often use in the company for a dancer who uses their legs or their dance tool to transfer their weight as opposed to a wheelchair dancer. When I first started contemporary dance, I often found that there were a lot of shorthand terms in the classes, and I wasn't sure I always understood. Things like tune in, create space, give yourself permission to follow your curiosity. So I thought we could explore some of those in this session. So let's start with find a space. What is space? It's a continuous, unoccupied area. So I'd like you to take a turn around your room, no matter how small, and notice the space. Notice where there's somewhere that is unoccupied and then occupy it. If it's useful for you, you can take a touch tour to notice the space. But if you're a sighted dancer, you can use your eye line to take in the room. Keep noticing the space. Keep occupying it. Start to take up space. Let's make some quick decisions and keep changing our mind. You can get a little bit more playful. Space down low. Space up high. Small spaces. Hidden spaces. Spaces in between. Let's keep changing our mind for a count of five. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Find a space where you have room to move and where you feel settled and ready to move. We're going to explore personal space. The Gaga teacher, Chisato Ono, talks about the two inches of personal space that we own that surrounds the contours of our body, our skin. I quite like this image, having an aura of space that I can push, guide and own. It makes me take up space. There's a good link in the description below if you want to find out more about Gaga movement. But let's take that image into this exercise. Send your arms in front of you. Notice the light. As if you're asking for something, reach those hands, those arms in front of you. Now send them up to the sky. Send your eye line too. Notice all that unoccupied space above your skull. 
Now feed your hands down as you roll down through the spine as low as you can go today. Again, notice how the light has changed down here. Rolling up through the spine and back to your original position. Deep breath in. Breathing out, send the hands and the arms down and reach out to the sides like a T-shape. Use that T-shape to now touch the edges of your personal space. Reach out of your bubble. Now bring some life to the fingers and comb through the space to the space behind you. If you're a sighted dancer, this will feel like dark space. Relax and reset. Let's try that again. And this time we're gonna use sound to sense the space. Send the arms forward and reach as if you're asking for something. Notice the light. Make some sound. Can you hear the space as well as feel it? Send the hands up to the sky and the skull up to the sky. Notice the change. Feed the fingers down as you roll down through the spine as low as you can go today. And again, notice how the light has changed as well as the sound. Rolling up through the spine, back to your starting position. Deep breath in, breathing out, sending the arms out into a T-shape. This time, keep your eyes front and play with the sound. Notice the difference. Bring life to the fingers and comb through the space to find the back space. Again, notice the difference. Relax and reset. Now let's play with all the space in between those places. Up, down, side, behind. You can imagine your fingers swimming through space. Reaching out of your bubble. And just like you would in the water, check the temperature of the space with your fingers. Check the temperature of the air. Keep exploring. Five, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna try something a little bit more complex. Sometimes a teacher will ask you to create space on the inside. So let's continue researching our personal space and then see how we can create space on the inside. I'm going to call hup and when you hear hup, we're going to pause and then we're going to see if we can find room or space on the inside without losing the shape or the form that we found ourselves in. Here we go. Exploring our space, our personal space, the bubble. Hup. Now keeping the form, which will look different to the one that I've got, and try to find some room or some space in that shape. Let's carry on researching. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out. And try and find some space or room on the inside. Let's keep researching. Huh. 
Hup. Deep breath in. Try and iron out the creases on the inside. Let's keep researching. See what works for you. Hup. Deep breath in. Just put a little less effort in. Deep breath in. See if you can let go of the tension. Last one. Deep breath in. And make some space. Really nice, shake it out. You might have noticed that I asked you to become aware of your breath or I asked you to use your breath. Often teachers will talk about breath a lot. They're not judging, they just want you to be aware of how you're using your breath. And once you become aware of it, then you can use it for an impetus to an explosive movement, or you can use it to create space, which is what we've just done. Let's connect to our rib cage. I'm crossing my hands over and placing them on my rib cage. Something else might work better for you. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. And again, deep breath in. And exhale. Notice how you find space when you breathe in. I also find space when I empty my breath. There seems to be more room Deep breath in. And exhale. Great. So we've found space. We've created space on the inside. And we've also become aware of our breath. So often in inclusive contemporary dance practice, you might hear the term, find your working position. I'm in my working position. My feet are in parallel. My head is over my heart and my heart is over my hips. But your working position might not look the same as mine. So here are a few questions that might help you find your working position. Do you have space on the outside as well as on the inside? Are you aware of your breath? Do you and your dance tool have the potential to move? Laura talks about the working position like being in a car. You've got the engine on, you're in gear, but you haven't pressed the accelerator yet. So take a moment to find your working position and then we'll carry on. A teacher may ask you to embody, visualize or imagine an image. Just like acting, tuning in to what is going on on the inside is a really important part of dance as a performance and also as part of the creative process. It can change your alignment or your posture. It can offer you new motivation for movement and send you on a course to find unconventional movement. For some people, using imagery is instinctive, but for others it needs practice and self-discipline. So I thought maybe we could practice a simple one now. We're going to start by using our imagination. So find a space. You might want to turn away from the screen. Find your working position. And check in with your breath. If it's useful to you, you can close your eyes or you can keep them open. Now, hopefully we all know what a rubber band is and we can imagine it in our mind's eye. Think about the looseness of the rubber band before it's stretched. Think about the wriggliness of the rubber band before it's pulled. And invite that quality in to your movement. Find a looseness in your spine and maybe a wriggliness in your shoulders. 
think about how it overlaps and twists. As the movement quality gradually fills your body, begin to invite the rest of your body to participate in the research. Turn away from the screen if you need to and have fun with the wriggliness of your rubber band movement quality. If you have room for more, it might help to think about your rubber band being manipulated. So you are not in control. Find the pliable twists, the looseness in the joints, and the randomness in the skull and spine. Now let's think about the stretch and strength of the rubber band. The pull. The resistance. Start to explore that quality. And again, Invite the whole of your body to participate in this research. Have fun. Play with these two silly qualities and everything in between. One. Great. Let that go. Come back to the screen. And now I have the reality of a rubber band to show you. Start to notice the difference between your fantasy of a rubber band and the reality. It might help for you to go and get a rubber band to feel it. Notice its looseness. There's a shiver, a quiver. It's much faster than I imagined. There's barely any control. And then the stretch. It's much more pliable than I imagined. It can stretch a lot further, further than I can. So now we're going to explore both the fantasy and the reality that you've observed. And I'm going to give you permission to follow your curiosity. This is something that teachers often say. So what do they mean? They mean within the perimeters of the instruction, go off and explore, make choices about what movement you want to convey. So you could take the movement down, take the movement up. You could explore the movement in another room if you so choose. So, find a space. Turn away from the screen if you can. Find your working position. Check in with your breath. Close your eyes if you need to. 
and then give yourself permission to follow your curiosity. But bring into your mind's eye the rubber band. And let's get moving quite quickly. It's just a silly rubber band. Can you pull in the quiver? The looseness. The speed. If you have room for more, imagine that someone else is controlling this rubber band. shake it off. Great. So we just used visualization and our imagination to embody a rubber band. If you enjoyed that, there are some videos in the description below from Home Practice that explore improvisation and imagery. So check those out. We're coming to the end of the session now and we're going to explore something that is often asked of you at the start of a class. It's something I find quite challenging, so I've put it at the end. Often a teacher will ask you to take a scan of your body, check in, or tune in to how your body is feeling today. This means we're going to see how our body wants to move before we tell it how it should move. So, let's try it. Maybe close your eyes. Take a moment to scan through your body. Notice your breath. And notice if there are any urges to move. Notice your desire or passion to dance, or maybe your desire to rest. Notice your desire to dance, or maybe not to dance. You might just be enjoying a little stillness. Great. Start to blink your eyes open, move the skull around, wriggle the shoulders. So for the last time, we're going to find a space. We're going to find our working position. We're going to notice our breath. We're going to tune in to how our body is feeling today and how it wants to move. We're going to give ourselves permission to follow our curiosity. It might be that you just want to simply respond to the music that's starting to play. You might want to simply stretch and let the session wash over you. Whatever it is, it's valid. And because you're at home, you can follow your curiosity. 
Enjoy this last track.
Gini mano. And gradually Gini mano. begin to wind it down. Whatever it is you're exploring. And begin to fade it down. Gather all that movement in and down and out. Bring it in, down and out. Shake it off. All that movement, all those images, steps, desires and urges. Back into the body. Channel it down. Let it wash down. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks so much for joining Home Practice. Please subscribe to the channel for weekly videos from us and we look forward to hearing your comments below.